welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at bonding in compounds. The first thing we're going to look at is the reason as to why bonding happens. To be able to find out why bonding happens, we need to look at the elements on the periodic table that don't bond, the noble gases. So I'm going to draw an electron arrangement for neon, one of the noble gases. It has an electron arrangement of 2,8. So two electrons in the inner shell and eight electrons in its outer shell. So why doesn't neon bond? Neon has a stable full outer shell of electrons. This means that neon does not need to react with other elements to be able to become stable. All other elements that are not noble gases need to bond to achieve a full outer shell of electrons. There are two types of bonding that we're going to look at today, ionic and covalent. The first type of bonding we're looking at is ionic bonding. Through ionic bonding, there are two ways to achieve a full outer shell. If we look at sodium, which is a metal, it has an electron arrangement of 2, 8, 1. There are two ways for sodium to achieve a full outer shell. It can either lose the one electron in the final shell to bring it down to the second shell of 8 or it can fill that outer shell with 7 electrons to get a shell of 8. Metals always lose their outer electrons to become positive ions. We've lost one electron, therefore this is a one positive ion. Let's now look at a non-metal atom. Fluorine has an electron arrangement of 2, 7. To be able to become an ion, it gains an electron. This gives it an electron arrangement of 2, 8, which is stable. We've gained an electron, so in the process we've became a negative ion. During ionic bonding, electrons are transferred. They are transferred from the metal atom to the non-metal atom. We can show this using sodium and fluorine again. The electron in the outer shell of the sodium atom can be transferred to the outer shell of the fluorine atom. This then gives us a sodium ion with a positive charge and a fluorine ion with a negative charge. Ionic bonds occur between all of this, the positive and negative ions. It's not restricted to the atom which lost the electron and the atom which gained the electron. Ionic compounds exist in lattices of millions of alternating ions. All of the positive ions are surrounded by negative ions and all of the negative ions are surrounded by positive ions. The ionic bonds are the electrostatic attractions which hold them together. Let's look now at covalent bonding. In covalent bonding, non-metal atoms achieve a full outer shell of electrons, but this time by sharing unpaired electrons. Here we have a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell, so to have a full outer shell it only needs two, like helium. Here is a second hydrogen atom. I'm going to represent the electron here with a circle. When these two atoms come together, they overlap their electron shells. Within the overlap region, they have the electrons which they are now sharing. Each of the atoms has an outer shell which is full and therefore stable. The attraction between the positive nuclei and the shared pair of electrons between them is a covalent bond. We can show how covalent bonds happen in larger molecules, such as ammonia, which has a formula of NH3. Here we have a nitrogen atom. For covalent bonding, you only need to show the outer electrons. Nitrogen has five outer electrons. 
they exist as three single electrons and one paired electron. We now need to overlap the hydrogen electron shells with the unpaired nitrogen electrons. Each hydrogen only has one electron, which we are representing as a dot. We can see now that nitrogen has eight electrons in its outer shell and is therefore stable, and each hydrogen has two and is also stable. This is called a dot and cross diagram. There are different properties which occur due to bonding. We're going to look at the properties for both ionic and covalent bonding. Ionic substances are always solids at room temperature and have very high melting and boiling points. They don't conduct electricity as a solid as there are no free charges to move, but they can as a liquid or in solution. This is because the ionic bonds between the ions have been broken and now the ions are free to carry charge. In covalent bonding, substances exist as gases, liquids, or low melting point solids, such as wax. Covalent compounds never conduct electricity. Have a look at this table and classify each compound as ionic or covalent based on their properties. So for the first compound, we have a high melting point of 801 and it conducts as a liquid or in solution. This would indicate that the bonding would be ionic. For B, we have a very low melting point and it never conducts electricity. This would indicate the bonding to be covalent. 52 is also a low melting point and with no conduction, this would be a covalent compound. 825 is a high melting point and conduction as liquid or solid would indicate that this is an ionic compound. Draw a diagram to demonstrate the formation of magnesium fluoride. To be able to draw a diagram to demonstrate the formation of magnesium fluoride, we need to understand that we have a metal and a non-metal. This means that we have ionic bonding. Therefore, we should be showing the transfer of electrons from one atom to another. If we start by drawing the electron arrangement for magnesium, you'll find the electron arrangement on page 6 of your data book. The electron arrangement for magnesium is 2, 8, 2. Fluorine has an electron arrangement of 2, 7. An electron can be transferred from magnesium to fluorine. However, there is only space for one electron to be transferred to fluorine. Therefore, we need a second fluorine atom to be able to transfer the other electron from the outer shell of magnesium. This means that we will form a magnesium 2 plus ion with an electron arrangement of 2, 8 and we will have two fluoride ions, each with an electron arrangement of 2, 8. In the structure of magnesium fluoride, there would be two fluoride ions for every magnesium ion. Draw a diagram to demonstrate the formation of carbon tetrachloride. Here we have carbon, which is a non-metal, and chlorine, which is also a non-metal. This means that we will have covalent bonding and should be showing the formation of covalent bonds through a dot and cross diagram. Carbon has outer electrons of four. We have four unpaired electrons and four chlorine atoms to join on. So we're going to overlap the chlorine onto each of the unpaired electrons 
and chlorine has seven outer electrons. We draw these as three pairs and then the single which can pair up with the unpaired electron of carbon. We do this three more times. You can now see that we have the structure of carbon tetrachloride, tetra meaning four. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.